In the beginning, the Word already existed. He was with God, and He was God. He was in the beginning with God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that He didn't make. Life itself was in Him, and this life gives light to everyone. The light shines through the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent John the Baptist to tell everyone about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was only a witness to the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was going to come into the world. But although the world was made through him, the world didn't recognize him when he came. Even in his own land and among his own people, he was not accepted. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn. This is not a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan. This rebirth comes from God. So the Word became human and lived here on earth among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen His glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. John pointed Him out to the people. He shouted to the crowds, This is the one I was talking about when I said, Someone is coming who is far greater than I am. He existed long before I did. We have all benefited from the rich blessings He brought to us, one gracious blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but His only Son, who is Himself God, he is near to the Father's heart. He has told us about Him. This was the testimony of John when the Jewish leaders sent priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask John whether he claimed to be the Messiah. He flatly denied it. I am not the Messiah, he said. Well then, who are you? They asked. Are you Elijah? No, he replied. Are you the prophet? No. Then who are you? Tell us, so we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah. I am a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare a straight pathway for the Lord's coming. Then those who were sent by the Pharisees asked him, If you aren't the Messiah, or Elijah, or the prophet, what right do you have to baptize? John told them, I baptize with water, but right here in the crowd, is someone you do not know, who will soon begin his ministry. I am not even worthy to be his slave. This incident took place at Bethany, a village east of the Jordan River, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one I was talking about when I said, Soon a man is coming who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before I did. I didn't know he was the one, but I have been baptizing with water in order to point him out to Israel. Then John said, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. I didn't know he was the one, but when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, when you see the Holy Spirit descending and resting upon someone, he is the one you are looking for. He is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testify that he is the Son of God. The following day, John was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and then declared, Look, there is the Lamb of God. Then John's two disciples turned and followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place, and they stayed there the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who had heard what John said and then followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, You are Simon, the son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Come, be my disciple. Philip was from Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went off to look for Nathanael and told him, 
We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth? exclaimed Nathaniel. Can anything good come from there? Just come and see for yourself, Philip said. As they approached, Jesus said, Here comes an honest man, a true son of Israel. How do you know about me? Nathaniel asked. And Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Nathaniel replied, Teacher, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. Jesus asked him, Do you believe all this just because I told you I had seen you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, The truth is, you will all see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down upon the Son of Man. Chapter 2 the next day, Jesus' mother was a guest at a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother spoke to him about the problem. I have no more wine, she told him. How does that concern you and me, Jesus asked. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Six stone water pots were standing there. They were used for Jewish ceremonial purposes and held 20 to 30 gallons each. Jesus told the servants, Fill the jars with water. When the jars had been filled to the brim, he said, Dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So they followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. Usually a host serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone is full and doesn't care, he brings out the less expensive wines. But you have kept the best until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was Jesus' first display of his glory and his disciples believed in him. After the wedding, he went to Capernaum for a few days with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples. It was time for the annual Passover celebration, and Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, and doves for sacrifices, and he saw money changers behind their counters. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and oxen, scattered the money changers' coins over the floor, and turned over their tables. Then going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, Get these things out of here. Don't turn my father's house into a marketplace. Then his disciples remembered this prophecy from the scriptures. Passion for God's house burns within me. What right do you have to do these things? The Jewish leaders demanded. If you have this authority from God, show us a miraculous sign to prove it. All right, Jesus replied. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. What? They exclaimed. It took 46 years to build this temple, and you can do it in three days? But by this temple, Jesus meant his body. After he was raised from the dead, the disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed both Jesus and the scriptures. Because of the miraculous signs he did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration, many people were convinced that he was indeed the Messiah. But Jesus didn't trust them because he knew what people were really like. No one needed to tell him about human nature. Chapter 3 after dark one evening, a Jewish religious leader named Nicodemus, a Pharisee, came to speak with Jesus. Teacher, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are proof enough that God is with you. Jesus replied, I assure you, unless you are born again, you can never see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, The truth is, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives new life from heaven. So don't be surprised at my statement that you must be born again. 
Just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. What do you mean? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, You are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things. I assure you, I am telling you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe us. But if you don't even believe me when I tell you about things that happen here on earth, how can you possibly believe if I tell you what is going on in heaven? For only I, the Son of Man, have come to earth and will return to heaven again. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so I, the Son of Man, must be lifted up on a pole, so that everyone who believes in me will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. There is no judgment awaiting those who trust him, but those who do not trust him have already been judged for not believing in the only Son of God. Their judgment is based on this fact. The light from heaven came into the world, but they loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. They hate the light because they want to sin in the darkness, 